Welcome back to Squawk Box. The Black Panther sequel, Wakanda Forever, dominating the box office. It scored the second biggest opening weekend of the year, beating out Top Gun Maverick, The Batman, and Thor Love and Thunder with $180 million in U.S. ticket sales. However, movie theaters are still struggling. Box office total for 2022 is only a little more than half of what it was uh, during this time in 2019. Joining us right now is Adam Aaron. He's the CEO of the theater chain AMC. Good morning to you. Uh, it's great to see you, Adam. Trying to understand yeah, both nice, how nice, to think nice about to this film too. and but also sort of uh, the state of affairs when it comes to just how how the movie theater business is really going. Well, Andrew, it's nice to be with you. And, you know, we've been saying for some time in 2022, all we needed was for Hollywood to release some movies. The movie going public is ready. The theater system is ready. And boy, are we having a big weekend this week. Uh, AMC globally is going to have more than 4.9 million people just in our theaters alone. Uh, and this is the beginning of what we think is going to be a big holiday season. So how do you think about that relative? And you've talked about how you need more films. What does it take uh, to, to get this to be a profitable enterprise? Last quarter, you burned through about $179 million. And I think there's real questions about what the long term of this looks like. Well, I don't have questions about the long term. I just have questions about right now, because right now uh, Hollywood is shorting us the traditional number of released movies. But having had lots of conversations with uh, senior studio executives, what they're telling us is they're seeing how much money is being made in theaters. Go back to Top Gun Maverick, uh, a billion six in theaters on its run. Uh, Black Panther is... I think going to be the second biggest movie of the year. Uh, almost 5 million people in our theaters this weekend. Uh, we think that Hollywood is rushing to get more movies released theatrically. We're quite optimistic. There's going to be considerable growth in 23 over 22, and again in 24 over 23. Uh, we're pretty confident about our future. So let's talk about that confidence. Uh, you just raised $36.4 million from the sale of about $15 million of those preferred uh, ape shares uh, that had listed back in August. I want to read you something that Webbush Securities Analyst Alicia Reese wrote. You may, you may think it's cynical, but I'm curious what your reaction is. She said, I well, think I they're announcing... Sorry, I already announcing... know what she said, what... What she said and I know what my reaction is going to be. Go ahead. She, she, she said, I think their announcement that they began selling some of their announced 425 million ape shares at such a low per share price speak to their cash needs or perhaps more frivolous spending. What, what did you think when you when you read that? Well, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, when we launched the ape security in August of 22, like, you know, a couple of months ago, uh, we said right back then that we were going to raise capital with it, but we we're going to do so with a slow and steady pace judiciously. The market sets the price. We don't set the price. Uh, we'll raise capital at whatever the price is, but we're not going to flood the market by selling a, a ridiculous quantity of shares. Uh, that's not the right way to do it. Remember, nobody's more practiced at this than AMC. Uh, we raised over $2.2 billion uh, through an at-the-market equity raise. Uh, in 21, and we know what we're doing. We're doing it the right way. Uh, we'll continue to raise capital, uh, and, and that's a uh, smart way to run our company. You said you're going to continue to raise capital. How are you going to continue to raise capital? Uh, we have the opportunity to raise capital every day in the market through an at-the-market equity raise, but we're only going to do it in small quantities, judiciously, wisely, smartly. Look, these are precious things are secured stock. I mean, our, our preferred stock. Uh, and we don't want to waste it. We don't want to spook the markets by trading too much too fast. And as I said, I don't think there's been a company around who's done this uh, more adroitly than AMC has over the past two years. We do know what we're doing. Adam, how do you think about acquisitions at this point or, or any kind of more consolidation in the space? Well, it's pretty intriguing, I must say. Um, uh, there's a big difference between AMC Entertainment and just about every other company in our industry. Look, our industry has been struggling because Hollywood has not released as many movies as it traditionally has. But the difference between AMC and almost every other company in our industry is that we raised so much money uh, in 
2021, basically. The, at the end of the third quarter, we were sitting on $900 million of liquidity. That uh, puts us in a position to take advantage of what our competitors stumble. Well, you, you may be aware, Andrew, because you're a pretty knowledgeable guy, that the second largest player in our industry, Cineworld in Europe, Eurego in the United States, they had to file for bankruptcy in September because they ran out of cash. There are a lot of other movie theater circuits which are tight for cash. We're flush. We had $900 million of liquidity. I think there's some bargains out there to be had. I think we can grow our network of theaters by adding high-quality, profitable, attractive theaters, do it at bargain basement prices, just in time for the movie industry, Hollywood, to right. give us more movies in 23 and 24. Should we expect those acquisitions, then, therefore, to be in the U.S.? Should they be abroad? Um, how do you think about those when you do them out of bankruptcy? Is, is, do you think there's specific theaters? Do you think you have to buy entire chains? Well, to your first two questions in the U.S. and abroad, yes, yes. To your question about uh, what's, uh, what we will actually wind up acquiring, we've already acquired a third of the Arclight Pacific Circuit. We've acquired half of the Bowtie Circuit, uh, Arclight mostly being in California, Bowtie mostly being Connecticut. There are going to be other theaters that are going to be available to us. Uh, we'll know which ones we're buying uh, as those uh, opportunities uh, realize. So Adam, they, we've had a lot of travel-related companies on it that say they've got like a period of, of inelastic demand because of people being shut in for two years. Do you have that, do you think? And, and is it dependent? We had Ari Emanuel on who said the content is going to continue. So maybe you will have good product to, to bring people in. But do you think that there's that, that feeling in people, I really can't wait to get out to an AMC uh, theater? And even if prices, if, we're, if you were to raise prices from inflation or whatever, do you think that you can do that? And, and, um, and it, demand is going to stay very, very strong? Well, uh, thanks for the question, Joe. Look, we've already raised prices because we've already already been confronting inflation. And when Hollywood releases high-quality movies, the demand has been enormous. Look at Top Gun Maverick. Look at Thor. Look at Minions. Look at Jurassic World. Now look at Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Literally, five million people were in our theaters Thursday to Sunday. Right. Five million. It's a lot of people. And we're just starting. The holiday season's going to include uh, Avatar 2, Avatar The Way of Water. You know, the original Avatar 15 years ago was the biggest movie of all time. Uh, and I've seen footage of this right. new Avatar, The Water. It's, it's spectacular. Disney's got Strange World coming out. Uh, one of the best directors around, Damien Chazelle, did La La Land, which is such a great movie, is coming out with a movie uh, with, uh, uh, at Christmas uh, called Babylon, right. which is a send-up of Hollywood. You know, we've got some big titles coming, and I think our theaters are going to be packed. Adam, but, but here's the truth of it. Even, even if the theaters are packed, do you look and say, okay, we can be profitable if our theaters are packed? Because I'm looking, last quarter, obviously, net losses were $226 million. It compares to $224 million the year ago. When do you reach profitability? What do you have to do to get, to get more movies in the theater to even get there? What, what does that even look like, and what's that timeline like? So let me take you back in time, Joe. Uh, for the five, I mean, Andrew, for the five years uh, prior to the pandemic, 2019 going back, the basic size of our industry is called the domestic box office. It's all theaters in the U.S. and Canada, all companies, all brands. For five years in a row, the domestic box office was between 11 and $12 billion. In 2020, when theaters were shut, it dropped by more than 80% to $2 mm -hmm. billion. Last year, 2021, it was it doubled four and a half billion dollars. This year, it's going to go up about seventy five percent, over seven and a half billion dollars. But seven and a half billion dollars is way below eleven, and our industry was sized for an eleven billion dollar box office. So no, if you look at last quarter, uh, and the movie titles in August and September were particularly sparse, uh, we're not there yet. And I've said publicly on many an occasion. I don't actually think we're going to be there until 2024 at the earliest. But I do think 2023 
is going to be at least 15 to 25 percent, maybe even more than that, bigger than uh, 2022. So what we've said all along is we're on a path to recovery, but this recovery is going to be a healthy four or five year recovery. Uh, having said that, uh, things are improving. Things are getting better. The strength can be seen in our numbers. Uh, we had to, on Saturday night, not that one day means anything, but we had the highest single food and beverage sales in our company's 102-year history, and we have an 85% profit margin in food right. and beverage. So, so there, there are a lot of hopeful signs. We're also doing a lot of other things, as you know. Uh, we're going to take our popcorn to market in 2023. We're going to launch a branded credit card in the first quarter of 2023. Just last week, we announced a partnership with Zoom to go chase the multi-billion dollar meetings market by linking up, meeting, or turning our auditoriums into meeting rooms and then linking them up via Zoom technology across the country. So there are a lot of interesting things going on at AMC. State. Uh, many of you are aware we bought 22% of a gold and silver mine uh, last March, which yeah. I might add has put out two press releases in the last two months that they found a lot more gold and a lot more silver and much higher grade. So there's a lot of good things going on. But if you just want to focus on the recovery of the movie theater industry and the movie theater business and AMC in particular, we've been saying for some time now, 2024 is our year. I, I see where Andrew's getting on all these things. But I, I will just say this as a compliment, uh, Adam. The, the, I don't know, where is it, Paramus or something? It, it, it's clean. It's beautiful. It's big. It's an event. It's experiential. There's totally. all kinds of, oh, no, It's I, really look, amazing. I, but but I, maybe it's still a tough, a tough business. And... And I don't know. Are you sure you you really like the apes? Because we've had some experience with the apes, and I don't know. You, I'm not going to say you sleep with dogs, you get fleas, but but they're uh, they're an interesting group. Uh, you you you, 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 sure, you sure you like them? Now now, Joe. Um, <laughs> let, let me let, okay. let me answer your first question first. Our, our theaters are in very good condition. Uh, yeah. AMC provides a superior product. When Hollywood releases attractive movies that people want to see. People are flocking to theaters in yep. huge numbers. This is awesome. This is your, right. this is your, this is your pet up demand theory, which is accurate. We oh. know for a fact they're going to be releasing more movies in 2023. They're going to be releasing more movies than that in 2024. I'm pretty confident that our business will, in fact, build and grow. Now, we need to do smart things to keep the business going to that point. Uh, as I said before, uh, we raised $2.2 billion of equity in 2021. Our competitors didn't, and we're in a strong competitive position, and they're in trouble. Now, as for your question about the apes, I have the privilege huh. of running a company that is backed by the most passionate shareholders. <laughs> on the That's one word. That's one word for it. And, <laughs> and between, uh, you know, depending on the day, we have between we had between three and four million of them. Uh, oh, my God. I know. I've heard I, from them they, all. And I have, too. They tweet me every day. Thousands of them tweet me every day. And I read but I read my Twitter feeds, oh my and God. I tweet them back. Uh, and I will tell you, I feel very lucky to have had these investors care about our company. Because if they hadn't been there, we wouldn't be here today. I, and uh, our company, I'm, which has a... Yeah, go ahead. Uh oh, they're going to say you cut no, him no. off. You better let I wasn't him, trying, I let him finish. Continue, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, you better let him finish. No, I was just going to say our company has a proud 102-year history. It founded in 1920. And I would like for the next century of AMC to be as successful as the first century was. We are the biggest movie theater chain in the world. And literally, we survived the pandemic. The management has something to do with it. We were pretty skillful yep, right, in what we did. Right. Well, but definitely Adam, not the, no, they're not the board, board apes, that's for sure. We, we want to thank you. We, oh. I will say this. We are rooting for you. We are rooting yep. for movies. We're rooting for Hollywood. And um, the fact of the matter is, it is true. You have kept this alive at a time when a lot of people thought you couldn't. Yeah, so it's a great, I want uh, to go back. There's a great that experience. is a, 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 there's a big award there. Uh, but let's uh, let, let's hope, hope we can get to the other side. Thanks. And if I get the quick last word. We got to this point because of those apes that Joe is so fond of. And Andrew, we don't and Andrew, we don't minimize the challenges ahead. But this same skillful team that guided this company through the pandemic is gonna guide it going forward and we will surmount all obstacles. All right. well, we wish you a lot of luck. We wish you a lot of luck, Adam. Thank you.